It's been almost a year since the release of the indie farming simulator Stardew Valley. Since then, the game has been at the top of the charts on Steam and is popular with gamers of all types who enjoy it for its detailed world, colorful characters, immersive gameplay, and retro charm. Hi, I'm Jacob with the Leaderboard, and we're here to check out the game that gave us a throwback to Harvest Moon with a modern twist. So hurry up and get your crops harvested, because it's the middle of winter, what are you doing? And also, because this is 107 facts about Stardew Valley. Let's get started. Fact number one. Stardew Valley was heavily inspired by Harvest Moon and is frequently compared to it, specifically Harvest Moon 64. Game mechanics like cooking, fishing, selling goods, and yes, farming are all similar to Harvest Moon. Number two. Some other inspirations for Stardew Valley include Minecraft, Terraria, and Animal Crossing. The dungeon crawling in particular is reminiscent of Minecraft, a similarly groundbreaking indie hit. Number three. Amazingly, Stardew Valley, in all of its glorious retro detail, was developed by one person, computer programmer Eric Baroni. He acquired a publisher in the form of the company Chucklefish, but Baroni created everything from the art to the sound and music to the coding. Number four. Baroni started developing the game as a way to hone his computer skills on the side while he worked as an usher at a movie theater. It was such a labor of love that it took him four years to make the game. Number five. Stardew Valley was created by Baroni as a sort of response to Harvest Moon. Baroni has a big spot of nostalgia for the classic farming sim, but he felt that the game stopped improving after Harvest Moon Back to Nature. He created Stardew Stardew Valley to solve the problems he saw in later Harvest Moon games. Number 6. Despite this, Baroni's favorite game isn't Harvest Moon, it's actually Minecraft. For him, his virtual life in that game had purpose and helped him feel like he belonged. Number 7. Baroni had no experience with pixel art and little experience coding for video games prior to making Stardew Valley. He has a bachelor's degree in computer programming and taught himself how to do nearly everything that the development of the game required. Number 8. One of Baroni's goals for the game was for it to contain real-world messages and one of the biggest messages is the importance of chilling out and stepping away from the hustle and bustle of life. For that reason, the character is seen working at a soulless corporation at the start of the game before inheriting their farm. Number 9. In addition to real-world lessons, Stardew Valley also contains some of Baroni's personal fears and concerns. He's addressed sustainability, fear of failure, and even his own existential angst. That's some deep stuff for a farming sim. Number 10. Baroni tries to work as healthily as possible, which is good considering how much time he's put into developing the game. Instead of cliche gamer fare like an energy drink, he drinks tons of green tea, and he even has a standing desk, though it's really just his monitor propped up on a sturdy box with his speakers holding up his keyboard and mouse. Number 11. Baroni lives in Seattle, which is fitting for a game developer. He worked on Stardew Valley while his girlfriend was in grad school. Number 12. The game's creation came from Baroni's desire to improve his skills. After applying for jobs in his field without success, he decided to combine the things he liked to do, such as music and writing, and get better at programming by making a game. Number 13. Stardew Valley was coded in the C-sharp programming language rather than Java, which is more accessible with most people who don't know programming. Luckily, it was easy for Baroni to switch from one to the other. He had to make Tetris from scratch for a school project using it. Number 14. Unlike lots of game developers, Baroni refused to do an early access campaign on Steam. Instead, he wanted players to see his game when it was done. He did, however, receive feedback on the game via Steam Greenlight. Number 15. To communicate with beta testers, Baroni used Trello boards to aggregate all of their comments and critiques. His dedication to detail and audience reception was immediately apparent. He moved cards around or marked them as complete in order to keep track of the game's progress. Number 16. During development, Baroni used the alias Concerned Ape to communicate with fans and beta testers. He kept his identity a tantalizing secret, so much so that the host of a promotional gameplay stream asked if it was okay to call him Eric. Number 17. The username Concerned Ape has a cool meaning behind it. While Baroni typically chooses usernames pretty quickly and bases them on what pops into his head, he picked his current one because because Concerned reflects his worries about the human impact on the world's ecosystem, and Ape comes from humanity's evolutionary roots. Number 18. Stardew Valley has a combat system. This sets it apart from other similar games, and also helps provide a contrast to the farming and socialization aspects of the game, which reviewers and critics have responded positively to. Number 19. Stardew Valley contains a biracial character. Her name is Maru, and she has a black father and a white mother. Baroni wanted his game to be more inclusive than other comparable sim games. Number 20. There's a character in 
in Stardew Valley who's a war veteran. His name is Kent, and he's dealing with trauma from his years in combat. You can get to know him and his shy son looking for an excuse to come out of his shell. That's just really sweet. Number 21. All of the marriageable NPCs in Stardew Valley can have opposite sex or same-sex relationships with the player. Much like with Maru, Baroni wanted to add something that games like Harvest Moon lacked and make the game more reflective of real life. Number 22. One character in Stardew Valley gives the player his real-world coordinates. Harvey, the town doctor, will mention during a specific in-game event that his coordinates are 52 north, 43.4 east, which would place him in southwest Russia, somewhere between Kazakhstan and Ukraine. Number 23. Like lots of similar games, your choices will affect what other NPCs do in the game. You can even affect what kind of book a character writes. Sensitive author Elliot is working on a book, and the choice you make in his first heart event will determine what kind of book it is. A mystery novel, a sweet romance, or a sci-fi epic. Number 24. Crops don't grow when the character isn't playing the game. This could be a disadvantage for some games, but in the case of a game as immersive and as intensive as Stardew Valley, it's probably for the best that you don't leave the game and then come back to a ridiculous abundance of blueberries. Number 25. The daily quests in the game are randomly generated, which leads to some hilarious combinations of requests that the player character can get from villagers. Because the basic template of a quest is, I need this specific thing for this specific reason, Baroni has had lots of images shared with him by players who found bizarre and funny combinations. Number 26. You don't have to start the game with the same farm as everyone else. When the player gets their farm, they can choose between a few different farm maps to cultivate according to their preference and what they want to accomplish in the game. For example, one map has a river close by for fishing, another has more mining areas, and another has more foraging opportunities. Number 27. That said, you don't necessarily have to be a farmer in Stardew Valley either. Baroni specifically made the game to be malleable for players and give them numerous ways to accomplish their goals. For example, you can spend all of your time mining for ores and gold, or become a master fisherman and get famous for your seafood. Number 28. The caves are one of the biggest mysteries in Stardew Valley. According to Baroni himself, the caves that the player can explore are very deep and very old, and contain strange creatures that might snatch up unsuspecting villagers. Number 29. There is a single friendly monster in Stardew Valley. He's a shadow brute named Krobus, and he lives in the sewers beneath the town. He's nice to the player and will gladly sell them items, though he still refers to the other monsters as his friends. Number 30. The name Krobus means bridge crosser, according to Krobus himself. Not only is that a cool shout out to him being a friendly monster who crosses metaphorical bridges to talk with humans, but it could also be a small reference to the fact that there's a bridge you can rebuild across the water in the game. Number 31. Stardew Valley also contains dwarves. Well, a dwarf. You can meet him in the mines after breaking open the entrance with a steel pickaxe or a cherry bomb. However, he speaks dwarvish, and in order to communicate with him, the player has to acquire four dwarvish scrolls and donate them to the museum. Number 32. In addition to the caverns underneath Stardew Valley being spooky, they also might have been the site of a major war. Now that is a story we want to hear. Number 33. Stardew Valley was originally going to be released on Xbox Live Indie Games rather than on Steam. Baroni chose that platform because it's more of a free-for-all, but once he realized the game was going to be more popular than he thought, he chose to release the game elsewhere. Number 34. According to Baroni, he spent 10 hours a day, 7 days a week working on the game during its development. Now that it's out, his time spent on Stardew Valley has apparently bumped up to 15 hours a day, though much of it is used to respond to questions and interact with fans. Number 35. In contrast to other games, Stardew Valley is technically endless. Harvest Moon, for example, ends after two in-game years of farming, but one beta tester of Stardew Valley logged 400 hours of playtime. That's about five or six in-game years. Number 36. Baroni has been highly involved with fans for as long as he's been working on the game. During its development, he kept fans updated on the game's progress using Reddit and Twitter. Number 37. Stardew Valley contains references to famous movies. In particular, there's an item that's a reference to the Scarecrow turnip head in the Studio Ghibli film Howl's Moving Castle. Baroni is a Hayao Miyazaki fan and said that Miyazaki's work has influenced him. Number 38. Baroni wants to keep working on Stardew Valley on his own. He wants to keep the game personal because that's what audiences seem to be responding to, and he said that you should be free to work yourself to the bone, but not to force someone else to do that for you. Number 39. The marriage candidates in Stardew Valley have specific and unique hobbies, and once they move in with the player, they have an area outside where they engage in that hobby. For example, one character skateboards, another plays the flute, and another meditates. Number 40. The player has the option of breaking up their own marriage. For a mere 50,000 gold, the player character can divorce their spouse and gain custody of any kids they have. Though there's always the possibility of you running into your ex-partner and having to deal with the soul-crushing awkwardness just like real life. However, you can also hire a witch to wipe your ex's memory of the divorce. And the marriage, too. Number 41. Stardew Valley contains a character 
who happens to be homeless, a rarity in video games. His name is Linus, and the player has the option to be cruel or kind to him. Lots of players and reviewers have developed a soft spot for him. Number 42. Two characters in Stardew Valley are carrying on a secret affair. Even though Marnie denies it, it's clear that she's involved with fellow villager Lewis. At Marnie's ranch, you can find Lewis's shorts in her room, and they can often be found together drinking at the saloon in the evening. Number 43. There is no mechanic for butchering animals in the game. Even though it's a common way to make money on a farm, Baroni couldn't bring himself to put it in the game after beta testers asked for it. The player bonds with the animals at the farm, and a little heart appears over their heads when the character pets them, and ultimately, it seemed too cruel to hurt such cute little piles of pixels. Aww. Number 44. Similar to the fact that you can't butcher your adorable livestock, it's also impossible to injure or kill animals and NPCs in the game. This luckily means that you won't lose your livestock if you neglect them, however, they will stop yielding products if you don't provide them with enough care. Number 45. Be careful about staying up too late. Fittingly, for a farming sim where you have to work hard to reap rewards, if you stay out past 2 a.m., you'll pass out and wake up at home the next day, but have half depleted energy. Number 46. The Joja Corporation will charge you for their help. Well, to be fair, it's not entirely unwarranted. If you pass out from exhaustion late at night and a Joja Rescue Team employee finds you rather than a kind villager, they'll charge you a fee for said rescue. How rude and helpful. Number 47. Stardew Valley contains a crafting system which sets it apart from similar games like Harvest Moon. By combining games in the inventory, the player can make items like bee houses or mayonnaise or fruit preserves, which helps customize how the player can develop and run their farm. Number 48. Stardew Valley also contains a cooking mechanic with recipes. While a cooked item, such as a fried egg, will provide a player with more health and energy, it won't yield more gold than selling the ingredients separately. Baroni did this on purpose to prevent the players from trying to only make more money. Number 49. The caves, or dungeons in Stardew Valley, are procedurally generated, which means they're essentially random. This makes it fun and addictive to explore the mines, but dangerous too, because the creatures you battle are generated in the same way. Number 50. You can't fast travel in Stardew Valley. While this isn't always a problem, and it adds to the mellow take-your-time vibe of the game, players and reviewers have expressed some frustration with this when they need to get somewhere fast or start running out of time at the end of an in-game day. Number 51. This is one of the few games that encourages you to watch TV. Within the game, that is. On the TV in the player's home, you can learn what the weather will be for the next day, and through two other shows, learn a new recipe every once in a while, and find out which fish might be available in the lake during the current season. Number 52. Here's something you don't get to say every day. In this game, worms are actually an important thing to pay attention to. Worms, which look like wiggling lines sticking out of the dirt, will yield an item if you dig them up with your hoe. Just like real worms, they're a bit more plentiful after it rains. Number 53. Stardew Valley has an easter egg to find before the game even starts. If you click on the concerned ape logo that appears just before the title screen, you'll get a funny sound effect and reaction animation. The next time you load the game, he won't be wearing his sunglasses anymore. That's an adorable attention to detail. Number 54. There's an alien in Stardew Valley. Actually, it's an easter egg. If you click the E in the Stardew Valley title card when the main menu opens, the letter will open up like a door to reveal a little green alien who waves at you. Number 55. Another space easter egg. During your first year in Stardew Valley, you'll hear a loud crash with no immediate cause. It's actually a meteor crashing and can be mined for a rare ore. Number 56. There's a witch in Stardew Valley. There's a very low chance that as a random event, the player character might be visited by a witch who will curse one of your eggs and make it into a void egg. It then hatches into a void chicken that lays more void eggs, which can sell for some pretty solid amounts of gold. No word on whether or not you can make void fried eggs, though. Number 57. Stardew Valley also has fairies, kind of. If you look carefully enough for them, you can find Junimos, which are a bit like the Harvest Moon Harvest Sprites, and they'll unlock new places for you to explore and nice items for your farm. Number 58. The one actual fairy in the game is called the Crop Fairy, and she's a random event for those few people lucky enough to come across her. She'll randomly select a portion of your crop to grow to harvest size overnight. Number 59. Stardew Valley has a wizard as well. He also goes by the name M. Rasmodius, though he's mostly known as just Wizard. He can only be found in his tower, and it's implied that the villager Abigail is his daughter. Number 60. You can randomly plant super crops. If you plant several crops of the same type in a 3x3 square, they might turn into one massive mega crop. It's so out of the blue that some players have wondered if it's a glitch. Number 61. The farm isn't the only thing that your character can 
build. There's a dilapidated building northwest of your family farm that's actually a greenhouse and you can restore it. It can be unlocked by completing the crafts bundle in the community center. Number 62. You're not required to stay in Stardew Valley and you can actually travel outside of it. While the bulk of the game takes place on your farm, you can use the community center to unlock the bus which will take you to the desert, a place occasionally mentioned by the villagers. There's quite a few exclusives in that area, so make sure to get on that bus. Number 63. There's a random reference and joke about AOL in the game. There's a broken CD you can find when rummaging through the trash that says it's a JoJanet 2.0 trial CD. They must have made a billion of these things. The massive fort I made out of AOL trial CDs makes me inclined to agree. Number 64. There's also a reference to the hit Nintendo game Chrono Trigger. The villager and marriage candidate Abigail has a poster of the main character Chrono in her room, and it even looks like she has a Super Nintendo console. Number 65. Stardew Valley is coming to more consoles in 2017. In addition to its original PC version and its Xbox and PlayStation ports, Stardew Valley will also be getting a version on Nintendo's much-hyped new Switch console. Number 66. In addition to home consoles and PCs, the indie farming sim has dabbled with a PS Vita release. Baroni and his publisher have considered making a port for the handheld Sony system, but haven't committed to it just yet. All of you billions of PS Vita fans will just have to continue waiting with bated breath. Number 67. One thing that the creator doesn't like about the game is the way that the player character's grandfather evaluates them at the end of their first two years on the farm. To Baroni, the tone of this is a bit harsher than he wanted and breaks the relaxed feel of the game, which is a sentiment expressed by players as well. Number 68. Eric Baroni is extremely dedicated to the game and to its fans, so much so, in fact, that he was initially patching people's corrupted save files himself. This is because, according to him, he feels personally responsible for everything that goes wrong in the game. This personal touch has really resounded with gamers. Number 69. Naturally, Baroni has his favorites in Stardew Valley. His favorite season is summer because of the lushness and warmth, his favorite villager is Penny, and his favorite place is Robin's Carpentry Shop. Number 70. Baroni also has favorite and least favorite gift items. In an interview, he said that he'd love to be gifted coffee and an Omni Geode, and he'd hate to be gifted a rabbit's foot or mayonnaise. So remember to put mustard on his sandwiches instead. Number 71. Stardew Valley has a co-op mode where players can farm with friends. This was an idea that Baroni wanted to implement early on. Number 72. More marriage options will be added to the co-op. Specifically, players will be able to marry other players. Players. A husband and wife can be married in real life and in Stardew Valley, and that's adorable. Number 73. One of the biggest bugs in the initial stages after the game's launch was one that caused the game to freeze and quit to the main screen while in the process of saving. This was patched pretty swiftly, but needless to say, it was the cause of a lot of screaming from gamers. Number 74. Open beta testing for localization began early February 2017. Led by Playism, Eric Baroni looked into having Stardew Valley translated into Spanish, Brazilian Portuguese, German, Russian, Japanese, and simplified Chinese. That's impressive. Number 75. Stardew Valley is so good that people feel bad about pirating it. According to a particular Steam review, a user said they pirated it at first and then bought it pretty quickly because it made them so happy. Comments like these are common on other sites like Reddit too, and some users even remind or gently tell other players to make the purchase. Number 76. Stardew Valley has received almost nothing but good scores. Its average score is an 88 out of 100, indicating an A- score score at worst. Not bad for a first outing from a new indie developer. Number 77. The popularity of Stardew Valley is almost unbelievable. In 12 days after its launch on February 26th of last year, Baroni sold over 400,000 copies of the game. Number 78. By April of 2016, Stardew Valley had sold over 1 million copies. To put it into perspective, that was only two months after its launch. Number 79. In terms of pre-orders, Stardew Valley was also a remarkable success. The amount of copies purchased on Steam managed to outpace the number of pre-orders of highly anticipated AAA titles, including Tom Clancy's The Division. Number 80. Part of Stardew Valley's success, other than being a generally awesome game, is due to gaming stars. Before the game was released, publisher Chucklefish marketed it to popular YouTube and Twitch personalities so they could stream early builds. Number 81. Stardew Valley was the 16th highest selling game on Steam in 2016, making over $24 million. It was also the fifth most downloaded game by new owners on Steam. It sold more copies than Call of Duty. Number 82. The indie farming sim is also incredibly popular on Reddit. One subreddit, appropriately titled Stardew Valley, has over 85,000 subscribers as of February 2017. Number 83. Like many other popular media properties, Stardew Valley has a major following on the internet, especially on Tumblr. There's even a Tumblr called Incorrect Stardew Valley Quotes for all your humor needs with the game's colorful cast of characters. Number 84. There's also a Jojamar Twitter account, not affiliated with Eric Baroni himself. In addition to retweeting
tweeting info about the game and its updates, it also occasionally tweets out a Joja Mart slogan. Join us. Hashtag Joja. Number 85. Stardew Valley is a popular game for live streaming. Lots of fans have done live streams of the game, even the game's publisher Chucklefish. It's also one of the most watched indie games on Twitch. Apparently a lot of us love farming, or at least watching it. Number 86. Stardew Valley has some seriously dedicated fans. One fan even went as far to make a cross stitch of the game's map, which is beautiful and amazingly detailed. Nice job. Number 87. Another artistically inclined fan named Kari Fry has made a Stardew Valley guidebook and coloring book. At a hefty 224 pages, the book is a player's guide for the 1.11 version of the game and contains useful tips, an in-depth look at crops and tools, and even a section called A Guide to Wooing and Marriage. Wow, I wish I had that guide. And not only is it well made, it's also creator approved seeing as Baroni himself retweeted it. Number 88. Stardew Valley is so true to life that people have even mentioned it in job interviews. A Reddit user named Safri claimed that when asked to describe a hobby of hers during an interview for a position in finance, she described her work in Stardew Valley and the game's economics in great detail. And what's more, she got the job. Number 89. Unsurprisingly, one of the first things people did when they started playing Stardew Valley was to try to make as much gold as possible. Players began making complicated spreadsheets and guides to make their gaming experience a profit machine, but ironically, this is nearly the opposite of what Baroni intended with the fun, meandering pace of the game. Number 90. When adding new marriage candidates to the game, Baroni went straight to his fans to ask their opinions. He conducted an online poll for a male character and another for a female character with four options each. The winning characters, Shane and Emily, won in a landslide and were quickly implemented as romance options. Number 91. Plenty of people have made mods for the game, but not all of them have gone over well. Lots of mods exist to make the portrait models for the NPCs more attractive or sexually appealing, which Baroni is uncomfortable with. Number 92. There's a mod for the game called Better Pigs. It makes some tweaks and adjustments to Baroni's original model for Stardew Valley's cute little pigs. While Baroni wouldn't say it's objectively better than his pigs, he understands why people would like it more and has admitted that his pigs are a bit lumpy and depressed looking. Number 93. And finally, there's another game mode that just adds more hats. It's called Kawaii Hats, and in addition to tweaking the models for pre-existing hats in the game and making them, well, cuter. It also adds the Metal Gear Solid 5 chicken head, the Pyro's face mask from Team Fortress 2, and even the power armor helmet from Fallout 4. To be fair, who wouldn't want to plow a field in power armor? Number 94. The fishing mechanic of the game has been the source of some contention among fans. While some fans like it since it's significantly more intensive than a simple point-and-click system, others have made mods to make it easier. Baroni himself is happy with the game's fishing, but again, showing how nice of a guy he is, he has no hard feelings to those who have made it simpler. Number 95. Stardew Valley has even helped some players better understand people with autism. One game reviewer noted that her brother, who has high-functioning autism, needs specific routines and can panic or get stressed if they're interrupted, but the welcoming and regimented world of Stardew Valley has helped him let loose. Number 96. Stardew Valley was nominated for two Golden Joystick Awards in 2016. While it lost Best Indie Game to Firewatch, Baroni did win the Breakthrough Award for his outstanding work on the game. Number 97. The 16-bit indie game was also nominated for another award during the 2016 Game Awards. It was up for Best Indie Game, but it had some incredibly tough competition and unfortunately didn't win. Instead, the award went to Playdead's Inside. Number 98. Baroni himself has received accolades beyond the game. Gaming website Gamasutra named him one of the top 10 game developers of 2016, placing him among big-name juggernauts such as Niantic and Blizzard. Number 99. Baroni was on Forbes Magazine's 30 Under 30 list for 2017. His dedication to Stardew Valley's development and his own personal journey from job-searching college grad to successful indie game developer make him stand out on the prestigious list. Number 100. Baroni had the chance to meet the creator of Harvest Moon, Yasuhiro Wada. The two game developers were interviewed together by PC Gamer Magazine. Number 101. Coincidentally, Baroni has quite a bit in common with the man behind Harvest Moon. Not only are their games similar, but they also achieved fame at the same time. Both of them were around the age of 27 when their charming and quirky farming sims hit it big. Number 102. Stardew Valley has helped Harvest Moon become more popular. According to Harvest Moon's creator, the success of Baroni's indie game has helped the Nintendo title resurge a bit and quote, instead of Harvest Moon being forgotten, it has become powered up and has gotten even better. Number 103. Fittingly, with a game full of as many secrets and Easter eggs as Stardew Valley, Baroni has a favorite riddle. It's the what has it got in its pockets is riddle between Gollum and Bilbo in The Hobbit. Maybe this is what inspired the mysterious caves in Stardew Valley. Number 104. Ultimately, Stardew Valley might 
might end up being about more than just farming. Baroni has said that his ultimate dream for the game is for farming to be just one of numerous professions that the character can have, all of which will be equally complex and will help the game focus on how it feels to make a new life in a small countryside community. Number 105. In spite of all the attention he pays to the farming sim, Baroni has his sights set on future games to develop. He's almost too good to be true because his main goal in making more games is to bring people joy. Seriously, Baroni just sounds like the best guy. Number 106. Stardew Valley will release physical copies soon. 505 Games, which also helped to release Rocket League and Terraria, will be working on creating physical copies of the game for the Xbox One and PS4 in North America. And number 107. For those of you interested in optimizing profit from your farm, there are some dedicated players who have figured out the most profitable crops. Take out your notepads, everyone. It's strawberry in the spring, blueberry in the summer, and rare seed in the fall. Happy farming! Once again, I'm Jacob, and thanks for watching 107 Facts About Stardew Valley. What's your favorite thing to do on the farm, and what changes do you hope to see in the game's future? Comment below and let us know. We have new videos dropping every week, so let us know what game you want us to cover next. And if you like getting more from your games, subscribe to the leaderboard, where we help you game smarter.